Hey everyone, and welcome to Lady Does Unboxing Worm Span. It's upgrade pack, and it's natural room play mats. So I'm actually in a library right now because I can't do an unboxing of board games at home since I have a lot of kitty cats who love trying to eat stuff they're not supposed to. Like this silica packet, or any of these meats, or any of the contents in here, or even the plastic wrap itself. So, in order to avoid all of that, library. And I will keep it down. I have here, worm span, the new Stonemeyer came, which is a perfect way to start off the Year of the Dragon with this new dragon game. I really like board games. I don't mention it, and I haven't really talked about it too much because it doesn't seem to me like anyone really cared before. I tried showing off Miss Monopoly, nobody really gave a shit, so after that I just didn't do any more of that type of content. But now I'm doing one video a day, and I need blogs. So we are going to unbox this. And I'm going to show you what's inside. For anyone who found this video searching up Wormspan, thinking this is going to be like an in-detail, really professional unboxing, it will not be. This is just for my own personal interest and to show you guys the things that I find interesting inside of Wormspan, and mostly to show my fans what it is I'm doing. Uh, because there are better people who do unboxings that I will probably link to in the description if you want to check that out. Otherwise this is just for me and maybe the people who don't usually play board games that I may convince that they want to play board games because they think this is cool. <sighs> oh, right. Um, just saying in advance, I have these notes here uh, because I noticed during my Loom Crate video, I didn't stutter at all while I was reading the cover page. And I'm trying to reduce the amount of ums and, and general stutter in my videos with more coherent thoughts instead. If I happen to look over at this for too long, I will probably cut that out. Just like that right now. Somebody checked out a whole bunch of books and the study room that I am in is right next to the checkout. So it was just a lot of beep, 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 beep. Um, so all of that's getting pulled out. As I was saying, Worm Span and Wingspan are both tableau building games which means that you lay out cards to take actions and gain abilities, play abilities. And this just was available for pre-order last month. I just got this recently. Some people haven't gotten theirs yet, so I'm actually one of the first people to get it since I'm in America. This doesn't even go for retail sale until I think April. So maybe if you like what you see in this unboxing, you can check it out for yourself. And this one, it says down here, a wingspan game, because this is actually a spin-off of wingspan, which is right here. Specifically, Oh, this is the Wingspan Big Box, or I guess actually it's the Wingspan Nesting Box. And what that means is that this includes the base Wingspan game, which is actually sized like this right here, Calyx sized. And it has uh, expansions in it as well. It has room for all of that inside this box. So in Wingspan, 
The game involves. Let's set this down here. The game involves you getting bird cards, and you play them to create an aviary for your birds. You lay eggs, you gain resources, and that is how you gain points for the game. And Wormspan is going to be something similar, but not exact. I'll leave this off. <laughs> I need to figure out where that goes. But not exact. In Wormspan, you are going to be gathering dragons. And that looks good, I think. In Wormspan, you're going to be gathering dragons, and you're going to be building a dragon sanctuary for them. And it's basically just in where birds are in our world, dragons are in this world. So let me read the back for you. You are an amateur dracologist in the world of Wormspan, a place where dragons of all shapes, sizes, and colors roam the skies. Excavate a hidden labyrinth you recently unearthed on your land and entice these beautiful creatures to roost in the sanctuary of your caves. During a game of Wormsman, you will build a sanctuary for dragons. Your sanctuary begins with three excavated spaces, the leftmost space in your crimson cavern, your golden grotto, and your amethyst abyss. Over the course of the game, you will excavate additional spaces in your sanctuary and entice dragons to live there. Chaining together powerful abilities and earning the favor of the Dragon Guild. So, I will go over the like differences in these two as I open the box. To which, let's go ahead and do that. But first, I'm going to verify. Yep. So, this is oh, this is my first note card. There you go. <laughs> Let's open this up. I already have uh, a little piece of here. It didn't come off plainly, I'm sorry. That's hoping it would look nice there. Well, I get it. And now, I'm going to throw this plastic away because I don't want the noise to show up in my audience. All right, so here we have the form span. Let me go ahead and show you. And I'm falling down. All right, there we are. It's pretty heavy right now. So we have this big dragon. It's the main dragon for the cover. And then you have all this art. What I really like about this box is that no matter which way, I'll show you the text. There you go. No matter which way you want to display this, it will look good. So if you want to display it like that, you can still read it. This is if you want to display it like this. And I think these two are actually the same in that regard. But this one is if you want to display it lying down, you can still read it in all directions. So I think that's really neat. I really like it when games take that into consideration. Ah, wait. I found it. Well, oh, it's so heavy. Yes. Not as heavy as the big box, though. The big box is heavier. That's still not quite. There you go. So here we have 
the instruction booklet. And you can see they have a mountainous range along the bottom. These are the contents. Probably I have that for me of what's inside the box. I will show it off later. I like that they have these sketches here on the bottom of the page. I think that's pretty cool. I'm gonna flip through it real quick. More sketches. Sketches! Again, I will be linking to that so you can check it out for yourself. I am going to look really closely. Oh, there's a natural clay mask behind me because I want this right here. You have the Dragon Facts book here. This is one of the key differences between Wormspan and Wingspan. What did I do with that? So, for Wingspan, how the card was formatted was it looks like this you have the name where it can live um, what it can hold the photo what it does and then additional notes down here on the bottom and some people actually said that this was pretty hard to read and that it would be easier to read if there was no uh, additional like notes on the bottom no info no facts on the bottom so what Wormspan has instead is they have this Dragon Facts book, which is every single card in the game and additional information for each dragon and its lore. I'm just flipping through this real quick. I don't want to show this off too much because I am going to do a Let's Play and I will show that off there. But Having it in a separate book also allowed them to put like more information than they would have if it was on the card. Personally, I don't know how I feel about this because I'm really big on the immersion of the game because, well, for me, I really like the lore. And this kind of takes away from it a little bit where you don't get the information immediately upon drawing the card and you have to like go and get the book separately and find what it is you're looking for. But I guess once you have drawn every single dragon and you've read every single information there is about it, you can just remember it and it won't be that bad. I really like all the sketches in it though. So. You can also treat this as a field guide, like you are documenting the dragons. And you can also treat it as an art book. So I see the need for it. It's just immersion is really big for me in every single aspect of media that I consume, TV shows, video games, and board games. But I think that's neat for now. I'll show that off more in a sec. They have this Automa. They have the Automa booklet here, which is good because I play a lot of solo games and I play with the Automa in order to have a score to beat. And I just like using it because I think it makes the game more fun. I will be linking to the Automa uh, rules and how to play and whatnot. If you want to just go ahead and look through it to understand what it is that I am going to be <laughs> doing in my Let's Play. Oh, and there's some art on the back too. But I think that's really neat. Yeah, that's still on camera. We have here some dragon cards. So there's, let me see, yeah, different ones here. 
large type dragon. Another large type dragon, and then this is oh, this is new to the Wormspan game as well. Hatchlings. So there's always been these egg in both of these games, but nothing hatches from the egg in Wingspan. Now, lore-wise, we are saying that if you pay an egg and a resource or something, you're gonna get a little hatchling, and you have to like give them more resources in order to grow up into a large dragon. And they all have different personalities and stuff. It's really cool. It looks like one of my tokens popped out. I'll check that out in a second. Um, they have these trays. These are not game trays. These are just regular trays. They are plastic because they wanted a lid for them in order to store your resources and not have them all jumbled around. They are not doing the custom trays, though, that they used to have for Wingspan. So before, they used to have this type of deal. It's a custom tray. It's made of plastic, and it's not very eco-friendly, but, you know, it looks pretty. As Stone Miner Games tries to make, tries to make the games more eco-friendly, they're trying to phase out the plastic trays and get rid of as much, like, waste as possible. So, I'm going to make that too. Uh, Asia. This. So, in the most recent recent expansion for Wingspan, instead of having the more wasteful plastic trays that they would have to get custom made, uh, they have just this board, and you put your three cards on it, and that is because they wanted to reduce the amount of uh, plastic that they put inside of these. There is some bags in here. And their argument for the bags was basically instead of more trays or instead of a custom game tray on the inside of the box, just put everything in these thinner plastic bags because they're less plastic and they take up less waste. But personally, I think the base uh, mass produced game should be as eco friendly as possible. They had some. I don't have them in that book right now. They had some compostable back, biodegradable backs. And I guess people didn't like them because they would like break very easily and they weren't very permanent. But that's the whole point, in my opinion, because I received this and I feel like it's on me to extend the longevity. So I just have. A bag like this, and I put my stuff in bags like this. All right, uh, I think I went off on a tangent, so <laughs> I'm checking my notes. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Oh right. Uh, I wanted to show this off real quick because I'm going to forget. So, um, it's like they have. This also custom scoreboard. Uh, thank you to Amp for getting that for me. I think it's really cool. And they have the one for uh, the dragon tail. I will show it off. Yeah, this is what the scoreboard is. Uh, this is the mattress. Everything reads. Yeah, it's the score per round, and then separately you have this to track your, this is a scoring pad 
for you to track your scores. Hmm, okay. You have here your cave cards. Uh, I will open these in a second. They all have custom backs too, in order to show you what area you're going to put your dragons in. Um, the reason I haven't opened all of these yet is because I feel like I need the board out here in front of me to show all that off. You have some cardboard tokens. So these are milk tokens, and here's a meat token right here. This is going to be your first player token. The first player token in Wingspan is like, is it the same size? I think it's the same size. And do I go hunting for it? It's okay. It's okay. Just take my word on it. <laughs> so it's also it's also the featured bird, which I forgot the name. You have here your coins. They are shiny and they have two designs. Oh wow, they're really hard to see. Maybe this is better? So this is the wing design. These are like scales. They're double sided. I'll pop this out later. And this is what I was talking about. So this is what they did for Wings by Nature. And then for this one, this is how they have the card mat. So you're going to put your three dragon cards here, and then down here is going to be your cave cards. And then by itself, with no cards on it, it has artwork on it. And on the back it just says game mat, which I actually don't think this one says. This one's just double sided. So I guess that's another design thing that they decided to do for this one. You have your Dragon Guild. So the Dragon Guild is going to be a way for you to gain uh, bonus rounds and bonus resources. Basically whatever the Dragon Guild has to offer, which, where are you? Let me see you. I don't know why this is written in this draft. Okay. In Wingspan, you basically just draw the cards, whatever resources you get, you get from the cards themselves. The birds have abilities that you take either each round or on activation, blah, 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 blah. In this one, you also get the additional Dragon Guild. You have four guilds. You got the Plains, the Rainforest, the Guild of the Highlands, and the Sea Fairy. And with all these guys, as you can see, following these steps will get you those resources, and then they have like a tracker for you to go around with your little people. So that's going to be a fun new feature. Mm -hmm. Double check my notes real quick. Okay. I'm with this note card. Here is my hatchling. <laughs> My hatch thing. Um, I should pop a couple of these out just to make everything look a little nicer and I want to show you how it fit in the game. And these are cardboard. I do have the upgrade pack because I feel like, as I mentioned before, the base game should be as eco-friendly as possible. And if you really, really like the game, you can upgrade it later with nicer things. Like, there's a cardboard insert that's an organizer, and you build it, and it helps you organize your cards better, and that's made of cardboard. Or maybe you want, like, metal, uh, not metal, maybe you want nicer bags. You can go ahead and get those, too. But if you don't like the game, then I don't think you're going to play the game enough for these cardboard components to get ruined. They're pretty resilient all on their own. Just don't be over here licking your components, I guess. This is the best part. <laughs> Organizing the mess like this may probably will not be the best part.
but this is like some weird fidget toy. So uh, let me actually show you as I'm going along. These are your crystal tokens. These are your gold tokens. This is your multiplier tokens. It's for resources. It's for resources and X. And then you have some meat. Meat. And you have some milk for the halflings. I can't wait to go through all the hatchlings. <laughs> they look super cute. Oh my gosh, wait, wait, hold on. It's important. <laughs> I always get very paranoid. I'm gonna throw something from the punch part the way that I'm not supposed to. Lip punch. All right, I think we are good. Gather this up. These are your builds. Your objectives, I believe. Yep, objective tiles. First player token. Resources and stuff. I'm just gonna stick into that. Corner area. Right and then I'm going to take a quick look at my. Alright, let me take. This is a hatchling. Ooh, I like this guy. Let me open this. Oh, wait, no, I want to do what is rock tail. I didn't think I'd find it so fast. So, uh, comparison of these two cards this is a wingspan that's warm span. They kept the resource pretty much in the same place. Uh, it looks like they moved down which cave you can play it in. And this particular card has a very specific, like a very simple uh, thing that it gains. No extra information on this one. Not that this one in particular didn't have the room for it. This has quite a lot of room left. So if we want to find the information instead of like a page number. Maybe a moment. Or wait, it's it's alphabetical? Yes. Yes. So it would be here. Is that the right time? This is the Wadi's Rough Tail. That's this card right here. Its habitat is the Golden Cave. Its size is medium. It costs two gold, one meat, and it can lay three eggs. It's aggressive. The Wadi's Rough Tail was discovered by Messiers Walter. And Biddy of the Plains Guild! In a room that some regard is Nash, the duo named the species with a portmanteau of their own names. I don't know! I shouldn't have picked this one because I'm gonna start crying! Shh, can I paint you that? Shut up, Liddy, shut up. Shut up, Liddy. Uh, this is the card that is inspired by Jamie Segmeyer of Stonemeyer Games is Cat Cat Biddy R.I.P. Biddy Okay. I need to stop talking about this or I really will cry. 
I just have so many kids. Well, and Walter. Biddy and Walter, but Biddy and Walter kind of look the same. And Walter's super fluffy. So I guess it is inspired more off of Walter. But Biddy was also the yellow cat. And he's got it. So that is what those look like. What did I? Oh, I put it back? Okay. Let's see. What do we do now? I'm really close. Okay. Uh, in regards to this, I was just going to use off really quick because I realized it never. Where even took them out the bag? These are your. I want to use the exact wording. These are your player markers. These are your adventurers. These are your guild tokens, which weren't in the same bag for some reason. You got some dragon eggs and some more dragon eggs. I'll have to think more about which vine is my favorite. <laughs> but those are the resources for that. Oh, that there's different. So now I have the upgrade pack here. So the upgrade pack is going to be for your resources and for your coins. It's going to be for these cardboard things right here. If you wanted to throw a couple more bucks at getting some nicer resources, you can do that. They are maples. So here we have your milk, your gold, your meat, your crystals, and your coins. I think spending a little bit of extra money for this is a good thing because wood, biodegrade, and metal is relatively uh, recyclable, almost indefinitely recyclable, can be recycled, reused, reduced, reused, recycled. I'm just going to take these out of your bags to throw them off better. Here we have the coin. And they're a lot clinkier and louder, but they are less shiny than this one, but they look more realistic and they have a heft to them. They make a lot of noise. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry to my audio. Sorry to the ladies at the front there. Sorry to me. Please look. Um, the... Yep. So the meat tokens are actually inverted in color on the side because originally they were going to be white. Just like on this token right here, the edge of the meat is white. However, these meat tokens have white edges. And they didn't want them to look too similar when they're lying on their side. So now the meat is red, even though the photo is white. Here is the milk Ooh. compared to the token. The gold ingot. They are not heavy. <laughs> These are not metal. There are, for like size and stuff, you can get metal resources, heavier ones, hefty ones. And these are all wood. 
And here is the crystal tokens. I guess if you're really dedicated and you really like the game, even instead of the wood ones, you can just go get some you can just go get some crystals and uh break them off into little pieces and use those as your counters. And I'll leave all those there. Yeah, colors. What's the circle? Oh, this is a round marker. I figured you would just use one of these, one of these player markers as your round marker. Oh, this instead. Yeah, you see, I dropped this just now. That'd be kitty food if I was back home. Yeah. A bunch of little food. And then I actually don't know what these are up close. Oh. With the shield. Your guild markers are shaped like a shield. Or a wing? A dragon. No, it's a shield. <laughs> and then you have your X. Damn it. So for the eggs, they have this black one, this blue one, dark purple, white with green speckles, green, purple, lighter purple, dark red. And these all have the same value. They are not more, like the colors don't mean anything. They're just for aesthetics. You have the same thing over here in wingspan. Okay, so. They're the same type of eggs. In fact, no, it's not the same color. Different color. Darker color. This one right here is from these band and this one's from large band. Same size though. So if you wanted, you could probably interchange them if there's any one that you think looks more like a dragon egg. I think this dark purple one right here, maybe. That one. This one. Yeah. I figure these can be dragon eggs. There's a bunch of different types of dragons. They can have a bunch of different types of eggs. You could just mix them all up and use whatever you want, actually. <laughs> and then finally here we have the... Wait a minute. I think... Ouch. The design looks really pretty. I love the color decisions and also I feel like each cave is very distinct. So I really like that. You have your egg storage here, egg down here, and then on the back, on the back you also have some more awesome artwork and you got some dragons flying in the background there. Uh, one thing about this is down here, right here. It is eggs conversion for your resources. This is the natural rubber play mat. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. So pretty much the same. In design, except for one thing, <laughs> right here, swapped, because this is how it originally was, and I guess they had concerns that if you put your eggs this close to the bottom of the board, you would knock it over, and they feel that moving them up would fix that. I personally don't 
see how that change would affect me. <laughs> if I will knock it over here, I will knock it over there. <laughs> and if not, I won't. Um, so the natural rubber playmat is not necessary because I feel like the cardboard one, you know, it's sturdy, it's nice, it'll do a good job. I just wanted to buy it because I want to support initiatives for making things more eco-friendly. And I think Stone Mayor Games is currently the only person using these natural rubber play mats. Everyone else is using neoprene and I would like to support an initiative to move away from petroleum-based products. So I got two because as I mentioned previously, I mostly play solo mode against the Ohma, but I have another one in case I do want to play a two-player game. And with that, I think that's everything in the game. Uh, just double checking. I'm pretty sure I got everything. Here's my final card. There you are. Um, I have to start packing this up. <laughs> Because I think I can only booked this room for the next, like, 10 minutes. So, I gotta get out of here. But I am going to be doing a Let's Play for this game later. I would appreciate if you guys like this video and go check out the instructions that I'm going to be linking to in the description for the Automa, just so you guys know what, what the hell it is I'm playing. Because the, the instructions will do a better job uh, explaining it than I will. Uh, this is the first thing I've done in a while, I'm sorry. Yep, and I'll deal with that later. That's all I got for you for now. Get out there, do all this stuff, and I'll see you next time. Bye!